All right. Our first question is from Apple Saucy714. Yeah. Is simple yoga Saucy. at home a few times a week a good mobility plan? You know what? It's been a while since I think we addressed this. And I'm glad whoever picked this question, I think this is a good question to talk about because uh, that's probably one of the number one things that um, clients that I used to talk to uh, about mobility would get confused. They'd be mm. like, oh, I'd say, oh, yeah, no, we need to work on your mobility. Like, oh, yeah, no, I do my yoga every Saturday. Yeah. And and we're There's all difference. And we're all very pro yoga, right? I want to make that clear before I explain this that um, I think yoga is an incredible practice. I think that if, if you have the time to fit it into your schedule, I think uh, it's awesome. But I also think that a, a big part of why I think it's awesome is more for the meditative uh, side of it, more so than like the corrective. Uh, or joint health side of it, which let me explain. Uh, when you go through a yoga class, it is um, it's very generic. The whole entire class it's is the drawback of all classes, right? Exactly. It's the, exactly it's the same drawback that you would do with any classes. It's not addressing your specific needs. And you know, when I'm training a client, I got ten different clients. I have ten different clients sitting in front of me, and all ten of them are very very different. And all 10 of them have – now, there's some there's some general exercises or mo mobility movements that I teach all of them because they all could use it. For example, uh, you know, a lizard with rotation or a 90-90 tends to be a go-to for all of them. They all tend to lack good hip mobility. It's just very common as we age. We just don't move in the transverse plane anymore. And so – you know, doing 90-90, lizard with rotation, which also addresses a little thoracic mobility. Those two tend to like kind of cover everybody. But then there's a lot of other little nuances in 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 their specific movements where they lack and that I would look at and go, oh, okay, you know, she needs to be doing more of this. And I would mm -hmm. prescribe to her. I say, listen, I want you to do, let's say, the combat stretch. You need to be doing that one every day, three times yeah. a day. Because, More joint specific. Yeah, because her, let's say her ankle mobility is horrible. But then her husband is just, he's an engineer and he's on the computer all day long. And his is like thoracic mobility. He has the rounded shoulder. So like handcuffed to rotation. I'm like, he's got to do that one like crazy. Now, that's the problem with yoga is it's like you kind of get this broad stroke of all these different movements that are not right. specific to the person. Not only that, but they are stationary static stretching for the most part depending on what and type the of goal is to end up getting into the pose which is well, the, the I, end goal so i have to i have to counter a little bit of that because yoga the done properly yoga is an active uh it, there's a lot of active stretching that's going on if you if you talk to most yoga instructors and it depends on the yoga if you're yes, doing a yin exactly if you're doing a yin yoga there's there's some static stretches but you know, which, you do, which is the most popular one, by no, the way. No, no, vinyasa. vinyasa. Vinyasa flow classes are the most popular ones. Yin is, are they? Yeah, absolutely. And if, if and when you do a vinyasa type class um, and you're doing it with a good instructor, they are, when it comes to cues, I'll say this right, This is and I'll stand by this all day long. Yoga when it comes to cueing people, yeah, yoga instructors are the best in the business. The best group instructors in the world at cueing people to move their, po their, 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 their position, you know, scoop, Scoop your hips, tuck your tailbone. Oh. Uh, you know, uh, you know. Look up tall. The way they are able to cue is so good mm -hmm. that taking. If you're a trainer, take a yoga class to learn just the cues alone because I think they're phenomenal. Well, because the class is so you know slow paced, where like every little incremental movement they can kind of capture and describe in better detail. Well, that's why I love. About of all the yoga, so here's the thing: of all the group exercise type classes you can do, yoga yoga focuses the most on form. It's the only one that I don't think should die. No, they, they, <laughs> I talk about. Uh, group class training should die yeah. for the most part, but yoga is something that, generally speaking, anybody and everybody that takes yoga is it's going to be good for. It you. is, and, and the, you are active in the poses, so you are getting a, a functional flexibility. You are getting mobility. A, in terms of group exercise classes, it's the best mobility ba type group exercise class. I think they're phenomenal. But the drawback is like what Adam's saying. The drawback with the yoga class is the same drawback you would get with any group class. It's general and not individualized. Um, individualized mobility training is superior because it's for you. It's just for your individual body. You're doing mobility movements to correct your particular issues and problems. This was look. This is one of the the major challenges we had when we created both Maps Prime and Prime Pro. The big big challenge we I remember when we created Maps Prime, we all went off to I think it was Reno. We got ourselves a, a place out in the out in the nowhere, and we all sat there, and we were stuck for almost two days 
on how we could create an element that would allow people to individualize their mobility and priming work. Like, how can you do that? We're selling a program that everybody could buy. We could put general mobility stuff in there, but then that's not what we're all about. How can we individualize this? This is so crazy because when I assess a client, there's all kinds of things I look at, and how am I going to teach the average person to do that? So we had to come up with something that was totally breakthrough and revolutionary that does not exist in the industry except for in MAPS Prime, which is a compass test that allows the person to test their body and then identify how their individual body needs to be primed and the, the individual mobility movements they need to do on their own body. MAPS Prime Pro does the same thing, but it's individual tests for each of the major joints. And that's the value of mobility work. The value of mobility work is the indiv how it's individualized because that's where you're going to get the most benefit. So my clients that like love the yoga classes and then have asked me like, okay, well, Adam, well, then what do I do for my mobility time or what should I do instead of my yoga class? And that's exactly, I, I direct them to Prime Pro and I say, and I normally start with them to keep it simple, pick, you know, three to five tops of the movements out of their that you fail at the worst, like that you're that you struggle with the most. Okay, mm -hmm. pick three, five tops, and literally spend an entire hour working on those those movements, just like you would in a yoga class. Breathe, take your time, connect. Yes, connect. Yes. Use and do the movements with intent. You're not trying to just move through it fast. So make it meditative, like a yoga class. You know, enjoy it, relax while you're doing it between movements, but spend the entire hour on those three to five movements, man, you do that. And the value is incredible. Well, you're getting every bit of the value you would get from the yoga class and a ton more because it's specific to you. Well, think about it this way. Okay. Uh, all your exercises, your whole workout has the value that it's providing you, but there's also a potential of value that it could provide you. Okay. And oftentimes the potential of value you can get from your workout is much more than what you're actually getting out of your workout. In other words, if it were if we put this in terms of points, let's say your total workout, your exercises could provide you with 100 points of value. But because your range of motion isn't great, because you lack mobility to do full ranges of motion, because you're not connecting to your body in optimal ways, maybe you're only getting 70% at or 70 points out of that workout. That's the value of mobility work. It literally makes your current workouts far more effective. I noticed this with clients through yoga, okay? And by the way, you can do this with yoga. If you take a yoga class, the poses that are the hardest for you to do, practice those at home. Right. That means you're probably you're addressing individual issues for yourself. So if you like to take yoga classes and you're like, okay, how can I individualize this a little bit besides having to hire an, a yoga instructor just to teach me? Mm. Think of the hardest poses that you get into, like whatever. It can be any pose. It could be warrior one. And you're like, okay, when I do warrior one, my neck gets tight. My shoulders get tight. I'm not able to hold that position. Practice that one at home all the time, and you'll get some of that individualized success that you can get from individualized mobility training. Yeah, I like to think of mobility as purely – it's strength training at the end of the day. Like I, In terms of flexibility training, there's, there's specific times where I'm like highlighting that with my clients, but for the most part, if you're talking about a good mobility plan, it is. It's, you want to you wanna make it so you're really connecting by – you know tensing up the muscle and, and making it into an actual active strength type of an exercise. Yep. And so if you come in with that mentality and you're bringing in like those tough poses that for a reason are, are giving you a hard time because you're not as strong and, and, you know, connected in that area of your body, uh, you know, you're going to do yourself a lot more justice. Well, I remember the first couple times I took yoga, I had a completely, um, my, my, I had so many misconceptions about it. So I took the class and I thought, okay, we're going to get in these poses poses and we're going to kind of stretch and, and, and stay in these poses. No, man, the instructor walked around is like, you know, I'm standing in this pose that looks passive, but it's not, you know, push your feet apart or bring your feet in, yeah. drive the energy out through your fingertips, drive energy through your head. Really what they were teaching me to do through yoga is a lot of how we teach people to use, to do priming movements. Right. You don't just sit in 90, 90. It's all about the intent. Yes. You're not, you're not just sitting in 90, 90. You're sitting in 90, 90, but you're, mm -hmm. you're creating energy up through your spine, down through your knees. Could out be massively productive or worthless. You totally. Know, depending on your mentality. 100%.